Uh, so this is a super quick look at the Forsetti steel uh, hunter knife. It's their fixed blade, so it's not um, a fold out uh, like an everyday carry. It's a fixed blade knife. Um, I've reviewed quite a few of their knives now, I think maybe three or four. Um, and one of the things I noticed is they're all a little bit different. Um, and the other thing I noticed is they all sell out quite quickly. Um, this one is a little bit unusual for Facetti for a couple of reasons. Um, the first reason it's unusual is um, the, the Damascus steel on the blade has a different pattern than I've normally seen from them. Um, normally you see the grain of the um, Damascus steel run with the blade, but this has got a kind of twisted droplet effect, which is actually very striking. Um, I'm going to try and catch this in the light, but you can probably see when I move this in the light, it's just because there's this contrast, it, it's just very visually appealing. Um, it's something that's just really rather, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain really, it's just really very striking. More so than I've seen on any of their other blades actually. Um, there's just something about the way this is set up that just looks really, really, really nice. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this particular blade that they've made is it's not named after somebody famous. So in the past, they've named a blade after Light Toller, who famously survived the Titanic and helped with um, the Dunkirk evacuations or Boone or um, uh, I'm trying to think of the... Oh, I'm having a memory moment. But um, this one, for the first time, they're not actually naming after a particular person. It's basically a no nonsense this is a hunter knife um, and one of the other things that drew me to it when i saw the images online is i looked at the handle traditionally with the um Fossetti steel handles uh their, with their blades their handles tend to be of some kind of lovely wood whether it's a tally wood which uh lends itself really well to outdoor knives or cherry wood i think i've seen on the light toller so with this one i saw the red and i was like oh wow I, you know i, I want to know what wood this is this is gorgeous and I think one of the biggest surprises is as I look closer and closer and closer, and as you do, you'll see, can you see the weave effect on there? This isn't wood at all. It's actually G10, which is a type of, um, I would say, plastic or polycarbonate. Um, it's commonly seen in quite a lot of military or utility kit. Um, what I love about it is it seems to have a really nice weight distribution on this um, knife, but because of the texture, you're not going to need to, the grip is really, really good. But also because of the fact that it's made of G10, you're not going to need to worry about taking care of the wood too much when you're using it outdoors a lot. Um, for those of you that aren't too familiar with Damascus steel, uh, it's two different types of steel kind of folded and, and worked together. I think they talk about it having about 256 different backwards folds in on itself. There's a high carbon sort of 1000 type steel and a, a lower carbon, which I think is like a 30N20 chromo something. There's a million steels out there and I begin to forget. What you get is the high carbon gives you the super sharp, um, super, super sharp edge. But uh, high carbon steel tends to lack give. It tends to be quite brittle. So the other steel that's blended through here gives it a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more forgiving and a little bit less um, brittle. Um, you can see it's got a whacking great. I reckon that's at least three mil thick. So this is a proper outdoor knife. Um, you can really jam this about without it getting bent or out of uh, a problem. It's also a through tang, so you can see it's going straight the way through the blade for strength. Nice little feature here I noticed actually. The little eyelet hole here right at the end. You can still see the Damascus steel showing through, which I thought was really, really nice. And so you've got a small hole here at the end that you can attach um a carabiner or a small bit of line i also actually quite like these holes put through um you can actually thread paracord between these just to store sort of 10 feet or so uh or enough line to to run a little um uh, hammock or a little tarp which i think is kind of useful um it's geared towards being a hunting knife it's not too aggressive you, you're not going to win wars holding this uh, i think from memory it's just over three inches in length on the blade itself um, and um, as well as having this very thick uh, spine to it, it's got these ridges, I think in the in the no, I think they're known as jingles or jangles or something, I can't remember. But these ridges just give you a little bit more control and grip when you're doing more precision work. What I like as well is that you've got them right up here too. So again, when you're um, doing sort of more precise work, you've got a little bit more control over the knife and a little bit more grip. Um, it also comes with this rather attractive um, leather sheath which just attaches quite nicely to your um, belt buckle although I would have a little bit of a gripe here and say that I'd like this to be a little bit longer when I put this on just to make it a bit easier um, and it also comes with three millilitres of oil um, the oil is actually quite important because it's a high carbon steel it does require a little bit of looking after 
um, when you've ever the, whenever you've cleaned this knife, the moment it's dry, um, I would just give it a fresh oiling. Um, otherwise, you will get a rust start to form on this. The rust isn't the end of the world. The knife will still sharpen beautifully, but obviously it's going to affect the beautiful um, uh, Damascus effect that you've got here, which is lovely. So it's worth the effort of just giving it a quick oil. And, uh, you know, we all oil our knives anyway, don't we? So um, all in all, that's about it. I think uh, from memory, the price is about 120 bucks. They tend to be done in relatively small batches. So it sounds very hypey, but I often come back a month or two later and find they're all gone. So if you are thinking about getting one of these, they come in a really nice wooden box. So if it's a gift, it also comes very beautifully well presented. It also comes uh, very impressively sharp out of the box as well, which is nice with no burrs. It's been done properly, which is quite nice. You don't often see that. Um, but yeah, all in all, that just gives you a quick look through of this really rather splendid um, Fossetti uh, hunter knife, and that's their fixed blade, so it, it's it's fixed all the way through. It's not a uh, switch out. Um, the only other thing I would say is, if you like uh, what I do here, I would be immensely grateful if you can like and subscribe to the channel. It makes an enormous difference uh, and gives me more encouragement and support to be able to do these kind of reviews. I'll do a link to the more in-depth blog in the description below and I'll do a link for the best price as well um, and thank you very much for watching.